I'm going to tell you exactly why Gillette insulting its own customer base is going to work and is currently working. Gillette is not a company in and of itself. Procter & Gamble is the company that owns Gillette and they sell a variety of products and a great portion of the other products that they sell are purchased by women quite often. Women are larger consumers than men. So if you're them and you see that everybody's uh, into hashtag me too, toxic masculinity, if, if those are the hot button topics that could get that hashtag and you want to get yourself hashtag like hashtag Gillette and you want to get men to do reaction videos being insulted or whatever by it, then this is what you do. You come out and say, I don't think that it was a genuine thing. I mean, I don't think the corporation sat there, CEOs and said, you know, this toxic masculinity thing. It's just not right. I don't think that's what occurred. I don't think those old guys at that table or shareholders got together, felt bad about toxic masculinity and did this commercial. I think it was beneficial to throw a bone to one segment of the population while throwing another under the bus. Because the way you figure it, because you would never, you don't do this with women because women will boycott and you will be in trouble. You will be missing money. But if you do it, men, typically we might do, a, some dudes might do a few videos, say they annoy it. But mostly ignore stuff. So you can kind of get away with saying men are bad. You're terrible. Hey, you rapist. Come buy my razor. And then men will be mad for like five minutes. And then we'll, we'll go to the store and buy razors because we forgot what that crap was about in the first place. So if you're Gillette, you can get away with it. Uh, it'll hashtag. You'll see more videos created throughout the day. As we sit from yesterday to today, the stock went up. It's in there like $91, $92 per share for Procter & Gamble. So they're not worried about money. So while everybody's saying it's bad to insult your customers, it seems to be working. And I think it will continue to work if the customer base, if you're a company and your customer base is male, you probably can get away with riding this type of um, bandwagon. Because I don't sincerely believe that men are going to get, we're not going to get together and do no real boycott. I haven't seen men do that. I'm not buying it. Half the time, we don't even know the company that owns the company that owns the company of what racers were buying. If you do, I'd be intrigued and interested if I see men get together and say we're not buying Procter & Gamble products or Gillette razors at all. That would be interesting. i like to see the numbers on that, but I seriously doubt that that's going to happen. I think the men who don't buy Gillette are going to continue not buying Gillette. Like I don't use Gillette razors, not for any other purpose. Then I just don't care for their razors. And But the men who do like their razors, they're going to continue to purchase those razors. Here's the thing, though. What just about a good portion of the razors that you buy are owned by Procter and Gamble anyway, so they're not going to care. You go, I don't buy Gillette, I buy this, and they're like, Yeah, we own that too. That's the game they play. They're playing, playing a much bigger game than guys who sit on the internet complaining about them. The other option here, besides being pissed off, is to take it in stride. Men could actually do something we used to say, suck it up. We could suck it up, take it in stride. You could also. Look at some of the things in the uh, commercial and agree. I mean, I think we all, the problem really isn't that we don't agree. The problem is the commercial itself makes the assumption that men don't already know these things. It makes the assumption, like this is one example. If you watch the commercial, you'll see two little boys that are family members clearly fighting at a picnic, a barbecue. And a father comes over or uncle or whomever says, hey, stop, we don't treat each other like that. The commercial makes the assumption that we need to do more of that because we don't. And to me, that's a ridiculous assumption. If you're fighting at a family picnic, the chances are someone who came over to you and stopped you from fighting your cousin or your brother was probably a father or an uncle or something. So I don't know where Gillette is getting this. It's, its view of manhood and its view of what men are is very monstrous. I mean, that commercial did come off like, hey, you rapist, abuser. Bah, bah, bah. You need to change, but buy these razors. It was crazy. So I can understand why men would be offended. I just think it's a waste of time. I think Gillette was playing its game, getting this hustle on. And toxic masculinity, whether you think it exists or not, there are some issues with sexism and things of that nature and how men operate. There's some things with how women operate, some things with how humanity operates, um, period. It's interesting that I see focus on that so much when I think it's a, probably more likely like anything else is probably a smaller portion of men that commit like the most horrendous acts. But the system itself for quite some time was built to protect bad behavior by men. And what we defined as bad behavior has expanded over time. So things that used to be normal are not normal anymore. It's just a matter to it's just a matter of adjusting to that and moving forward and getting over it. 
Like, that's just what it is. I find it abnormal, but that's because it wasn't normal before. Sometimes you try to fight to keep a behavior going that really shouldn't have never been going in the first place. There, there were people when uh, racism was changing and when it was starting to uh, get, come to an end, which is still not at an end. But once it started to shift, the cultural shift towards being against racism, there were a lot of people who were like, oh, man, I don't understand. That's how it is. It's how it's supposed to be. Well, it's not that no more. And we've decided that it's not how it's supposed to be. So now you're living in we're all living in a world where women are saying we don't want that anymore. That's not how it's supposed to be. And so you have to find the balance in adjusting to that. You have to uh, figure out a way to individually, I say, not collectively. And that's the problem with all of these things is that everybody as a collective. We say men are raping, men are abusers. When in reality, it's a very small percentage of men. The rest of us who don't commit those acts need to be honest and say we don't actually know those guys. We can't help you with the rapists or serial rapists because serial rapists don't typically hang around your average normal man. They're predators. Predators tend to hide so that they can prey on people. So we're probably no more. Uh, we're no more adept at recognizing who's a predator and who isn't than women are. And I think society needs to be honest about that because we are looking even in that commercial. It's like hold men accountable. It's like I, to be honest, I can't hold the serial rapists accountable or the child molesters because I don't know them. And most men don't actually know those guys. A lot of those guys are well hidden just as they surprise uh, women. When when those guys come out, men are just as shocked. Even when it's our friends, we're like, oh, shit, we did. Wow. You're doing that. Like, that's crazy. So we're not supermen who are psychics and we're not like, oh, I know that guy's like that. I just ain't going to tell anybody. Most people don't know. Predators are really, really good at hiding. We should all get better at recognizing them and we should all get better at holding them accountable once we do recognize them. As far as this Gillette commercial, Gillette was playing a game. It was getting their hustle on. You can't knock the hustle. If hashtag me too is the thing, if toxic masculinity is the thing, then corporations are going to jump on that because women spend a lot of money. So they have to support that customer base um, because we don't spend as much money, to be honest, or they don't think we do, or we don't, they don't necessarily believe we are the purchasing power within our homes. It's, and they know we ignore stuff. It's easy to toss us under the bus. That's the game. It ain't right, but it's real. I would say instead of being so offended, why not really look at some of the things in that commercial and say, yeah, they're right. We should do more of that because it's not like we don't do those things. All those things are done already, just not done by everybody. It's not wrong. We encourage it. Hey, do some more. OK, do more of that. It's not a big deal. The assumption that we don't do it at all, which is what happened at the commercial, was insulting. But some things you got to take on the chin and be like, OK, it is what it is. I'm a man. I've been taught to suck it up. So you press on and you change whatever you can change individually. The outrage is kind of ridiculous. There's so many things going on right now to be outraged at a Gillette commercial. I mean, the government is shut down. Um, even scarier, something that's personally bothering me is maternal health care. You know what I'm saying? Babies are dying because here in America where we're crying about Gillette commercials and when we're crying about, I didn't like how he talked to me on this date or how she talked to me on this date or my people don't like my fucking Tinder profile or my Facebook likes and Instagram likes. I need to get this and get that. While we're doing that, babies are dying and this country has literally the worst maternal health care in the developing nations, in the developing world. But nobody talks about that in a major way. I, now, if companies start doing that, jumping up, I want to hear that, even though I know those companies still probably don't care about women or maternal health the way they say, or babies, at least care about the babies. At least then it would be spreading more of the word. But there's a lot of topics out there. But they're not talking about that. I understand where men are coming from with the Gillette commercials. Everybody's defining manhood, calling it rapey, calling it monstrous. But nobody's actually asking men what manhood is or what we think it is. Nobody ever has that discussion. So what? You come out and then you have the discussion. Quite often, men get seen as monsters and the finger gets pointed because we don't like to be on Twitter all day or on social media talking. A bunch of the talk is coming from women. So you're going to get that perspective. Perhaps if men speak up more, you get a different perspective. But we don't. So that's the game. Peace.